FPL Game Week 24 team selection time. We have had double Game Week 25 announced. We've had confirmation of blank Game Week 26. We have double Game Week 28 announced and we have an upcoming blank in Game Week 29. So this is finally time. We have so much more information. It is really time to start thinking about future planning of our team, about the number of transfers we want to make. I've got two free transfers, two million in the bank and several flags in my team as well. There are plenty of moves I'm looking. I'm considering minus fours, minus eight, and there is a small possibility at a minus 12 as well. So Today, we're going to go through that Game Week 24 team selection, but what we're also going to do is cover some of those upcoming doubles. We're going to cover some of my chip strategy and general planning in FPL at the moment. What's up everyone, FPL Harry here. Before we dive in, 1,000 likes on the video is the aim. Subscribe if you are new around here as well. So before we look at all the detail of Game Week 24 to Game Week 29, quick review of how Game Week 23 went and it went really well. I started the Game Week thinking it was going to be a bad one given I didn't have Richarlison and he scored 15 points. I thought I was going to spend the rest of the Game Week basically trying to claw my way back, which I was doing. I was actually on a red arrow going into the final game, but of course that Foden 20-pointer, I had my cap Ramsey armband on Haaland. So 30 points came for me in that final game, which gave me a score of 83 points overall. I beat my safety score quite comfortably and I got a reasonable green arrow from 40k up to 27k. Well, about 27 and a half, so maybe 28k. But very, very happy with that. One of the other big differentials for me this week was keeping Trippier. He scored nine. And if I didn't have Trippier, I would have played Gabriel, who got a minus one. So that is another 10 point swing. So Foden, a lot of points across the midfield, but unfortunately we do have a yellow flag on Anthony Gordon. We do have a orange red flag on Eze as well. So with the upcoming doubles, with the upcoming blanks, there are plenty of moves in around midfield, up front and in defense that I'm considering, but it's nice to have a green arrow before it all starts. So we're going to start by covering a bit of the FPL schedule. So we, of course, had the double confirmed in game week 25. This graphic is taken from Ben Krellin over on Twitter. If you don't follow Ben, please make sure you do. All of these graphics are so incredibly useful. Game week 25, we've had the double game week confirmed for Liverpool, Luton, for Manchester City and Brentford, with two of them then blanking in game week 26 being Liverpool and Luton. So the difficult thing with those two is if you buy lots of them the next couple of weeks, you do then have the issue of them blanking in game week 26. Game week 28, though, we have then had an additional fixture added in Bournemouth versus Luton. So the likes of Slanky plus your Luton assets are then very appealing in game week 28. A lot of people like myself considered selling Slanky this week. Luton also now have a double in game week 25, a blank in game week 26, a single fixture in game week 27, and then a double in game week 28. At the moment, we don't know if they're going to blank in game week 29. Of course, game week 29, as a reminder, is caused by the quarterfinals of the FA Cup. There is one more round of FA Cup between now and then, and that is just before game week 27. So going into game week 27, we will know for sure the blanks that are going to take place in game week 29. So those teams up at the top are really the ones that we're going to be looking at and potentially using transfers on this week. Manchester City, Liverpool, Luton, because they now have two doubles, and Brentford potentially as well. So with the slight clarity on some of the doubles blanks being announced. Of course, we got the confirmation that it was a Chelsea win last night, which means Chelsea and Arsenal also likely to blank in game week 29, whereas Aston Villa versus West Ham is going to go ahead in game week 29. This does make chip strategy a little bit clearer. And for me, I have two chip strategies left that I am considering at the moment. Option A, which I think is about 60-70% likely, this would be to play my triple captain in game week 25. In theory, there's a small chance that I play in game week 28 if I preferred it for Dominic Solanke. Now, Haaland in game week 25 would be Chelsea at home, Brentford at home. Solanke in game week 28 would be Sheffield United at home and Luton at home. The double in game week 28 for Solanke is definitely better than the one for Manchester City in game week 25, but... Of course, you're captaining Haaland in game week 25, who's probably more reliable for points at the moment. This would then leave me to dead end my team into game week 28. And what I mean by dead end is use transfers into game week 29, game week 28 as well for the double, then wildcard soon after the blanking game week 29 
and wildcard ready for the rest of the season. What this allows you to do is buy all the players that get you through the Dublin game week 28, lots of Bournemouth and Luton maybe, buy players that get you through the Blank in game week 29 and then you're not stuck with them for the rest of the season. I would then free hit probably in 34 and bench boost in game week 37, but this in theory could be the other way round. The reason why this is so popular is the game week 34 versus game week 37 doubles are very, very likely to be very different sets of teams. So teams are unlikely to double in both 34 and in 37 as well. And there is reasoning for that. I discussed it in a chip strategy video last week. So it's very difficult to wildcard just before game week 34 and 37 and put out a team that will be good for both of them, particularly if you're going to use your bench boost in one of them. So free hit 34 and bench boost 37. Now, the other strategy, which does come into a little bit of strength, is using all of the chips quite soon. That would be to triple captain in game week 25, probably, wildcarding just after the blank in game week 26. So what this would allow you to do is buy lots of players for the double in 25, Make sure you get a full team out in game week 26 and then wildcard straight after. Wildcarding in game week 27, you could set up nicely for a bench boost in game week 28 potentially and then free hit game week 29. I've always said this, if you are going to wildcard before game week 29, you have to free hit that week. Now, it does allow you to attack the doubles in 25 really well. It get, allows you to wildcard into game week 28 pretty well. Make sure you've got the full strength doublers potentially that you have in there. Play your bench boost where Luton and Bournemouth have great enablers for you to play your bench boost in. Free hit in game week 29 and then just use your transfers for the rest of the season. Strategy B will likely get you a reasonable amount of green arrows between now and game week 30. But it does mean you are left without any chips to play between game week 30 and the end of the season when a lot of other people will play their chips. So game option A will give me a bigger rank boost later on, but option B will give me one earlier on. They're both good strategies. At the moment, I'm on option A. What could change that for me? So I plan on buying some Luton players this week. If Luton actually end up blanking in game week 29, so Nottingham Forest, for example, beat Manchester United in the FA Cup, so that game doesn't go ahead in game week 29, that might force me into option B just because I then wouldn't have nearly enough players out in game week 29 as part of the blank. So... To talk about the players that I am considering buying this week, I've got a sort of hierarchy of picks I have and I want at the moment. There are lots of Luton players. If you're going to be annoyed with me recommending Luton players, then maybe this is the time not to watch the rest of this video, right? The reason I like Luton players to buy them into your team, they have a great fixture this week at home to Sheffield United. They increase the number of double game week players I have in game week 25. They are great enablers if you're trying to buy someone like Kevin De Bruyne. They have doubles in game week 28 as well, which is pretty good away at Bournemouth and away at Crystal Palace. And then in game week 29, they might have a fixture. That is five reasons. The only negative, of course, is the blank in game week 26. But if you can navigate with them, I do think there are some really nice enablers. And they've been really, really good recently in some of their performances. Of course, beat Brighton, went really close with Chelsea. They, of course, then drew four all with Newcastle at the weekend. In goal, I like Kaminsky. It's just playing the fixtures. My goalkeepers are not returning in Dubravka and Ariola. I could go Kaminsky and we'll talk about him in a moment. Allison. I'm probably not going to buy him, but he is potentially on radar. Because Ariola is now guaranteed to play in game week 29, I don't have to worry about that. And Allison does have a good fixture this week and a nice double in game week 25. Into defence, it's similar team. So Alfie Doughty, a great cheap defender from Luton. Good fixture this week, double, and then the double in game week 28. Alex Moreno, now with Aston Villa guaranteed to play in game week 29. An Aston Villa player is quite nice just to hold every single week. They are just good to carry through, which a lot of us considered selling Watkins going into this week. And it now seems unlikely that many of us do that for that exact reason. And then Liverpool. I wouldn't buy Trent if you don't own him now. I own him, so I don't massively want to go doubling up on him. But if I did, it would probably be Van Dijk first and then I'd consider Robertson. Into midfield, so I already own Phil Foden. Kem De Bruyne is my number one target. I like Diego Jotin next on Friday, we'll get an update from Klopp on how good Mo Salah is doing in terms of his recovery. If he's likely to be back, it does knock Jota down the list a little bit. Ross Barkley is nice and cheap, and he has the doubles as per Luton players. 
Kudus and then Douglas Louise, the single game week players that do, of course, have the fixture guaranteed in game week 29 now and can carry you through pretty well. Up front, Darwin is my number one pick. I wish I could be buying Darwin this week. I'm not certain it's going to work out for me, but I am definitely considering it. And he is my favorite forward. Ivan Tony is next. So Brentford, of course, double in game week 25. They don't have a fantastic run of fixtures, but they double in 25 and they play in all the blanks. So he is a nice option to just carry through. And then the two cheap options from Luton. I probably put Adebayo first above Morris, just he feels slightly more nailed, although they are playing up front together at the moment. So those are the players I'm considering, but which of them do I actually think I'm going to buy this week? So unfortunately, we've had updates from Roy Hodgson today that it looks like Eze is going to be out for a while. There are original reports that were maybe two or three game weeks that he was going to miss, but it sounds like it's not even going to be that. The reason two to three game weeks would be interesting is that might bring Eze back for Burnley at home in game week 26, but I feel like it's very hit and miss that if I kept him and he didn't play, I'd be very annoyed with myself that I had decided to keep him. So Eze is likely to go and Eze to De Bruyne is a transfer I really want. There aren't many other midfielders that I feel like benefit me in the long term apart from De Bruyne. If I was to buy Jota, which I could do, but it gives me a big issue going into the blank in game week 26. And I also plan on doing Dominic Solanke down to Adebayo. Now, you're probably thinking, Harry, why are you selling Solanke if he's going to double in game week 28? Unfortunately, I need the money from somewhere. And he is the obvious place for me to go and find that money at the moment. And I really like Adebayo as a very cheap option. Take a little bit of money out. It allows me to get to De Bruyne. Now, I'm about 0.6 million short of these two transfers. So I'm pretty certain that I'm going to end up taking a minus four this week. But these two transfers feel almost locked in. I'd say I'm about 75% sure that I'll make these two transfers. But at some point, I've got to find a way to free up a bit of money in order to go and do that. Now, there are two places I could do that. The first one is in defense, and that is downgrading Pedro Porro to Alfie Doughty. Now, Doughty is a great option and Porro hasn't looked as good recently. Doughty, of course, has Sheffield United this week. Then he doubles. Now he does blank in game week 26, but so does Pedro Porro. Pedro Porro blanks. So I'm not adding a blank game week player by making these transfers. The other one is selling Cole Palmer and downgrading him. Because of that Chelsea win, Chelsea now have a blank in game week 26. They play Manchester City away in game week 25. And they blank in game week 29. I never thought the day would come where I'd sell Cole Palmer. But I do think with the amount of fixtures coming up, I could sell him. So those two moves that we saw before of De Bruyne in for Eze and Solanke down to Adebayo is likely to be freeing up the final bit of money with one of these two moves. Now, the only other thing to mention is, is it worth me buying Kaminsky? And goalkeepers are not performing at the moment. But is it just worth going and buying a double game week keeper who's got two double game weeks on the horizon and just hope that he outscores the others who don't seem to be keeping any clean sheets at the moment? So Dubravka and Ariola is the top rotation you've got on screen. It rotates pretty well. I have a pretty good rotation for them between now and about game week 30, which is when I'd want to play my wild card. Now, I could sell either of Dubravka or Ariola. To be honest, selling Ariola feels like a silly thing to do now because Ariola has that fixture guaranteed in game week 29. And although I think Kaminsky will play in game week 29 if Forrest lose against Manchester United in the FA Cup, it's not guaranteed. So I could sell Ariola to Kaminsky and then suddenly game week 29 comes around and I don't have a keeper, which doesn't feel like the right thing to do. But if I did Ariola to Kaminsky, it would again give me a pretty good rotation. I could play Kaminsky this week in the doubles in game week 29 if he gets the fixture as well. Or I could sell Dubravka up to him. Now that is a slight bit of difference in money, which might not seem like a lot, but it does impact a couple of my transfers. Dubravka up to Kaminsky, even if Kaminsky does play in game week 29 or he doesn't, I have Ariola, so I don't massively need to think about this. Now, this would be a minus four. I'm not going to sacrifice any of my other transfers to do this. And is a Luton keeper worth a minus four? Maybe not, but it does add at least one fixture in game week 25. It adds another fixture in game week 28, and it might give me a better fixture in game week 29. So is it worth a minus four? Maybe not, but it is something I'm considering just to add more fixtures to my lineup. So quickly, let's have a look at my lineup for game week 24. I do plan on taking a minus four, but it isn't in goal. In goal, I still am not certain that Kaminsky's worth it now that Ariola has that fixture guaranteed 
in game week 29, which is part of the reason that buying Kaminsky would have been a nice thing to do. Dubravka starting this week away at Forest. It's not ideal because I actually have to double up on Newcastle defence, who've been pretty poor recently because I've got Kieran Trippier in there. I do think Trent will start. He might play in midfield with Shabazz Light out, but I do think he'll start at home to Burnley. I do plan on making a defensive transfer and downgrading Pedro Porro to free up some money and buying Alfie Doughty for the nice fixture this week, for the double next week, for the double in game week 28, and hopefully a fixture in game week 29. On set pieces, he's playing so far forward. I really, really like him as an option. Into midfield, I do then plan to do those other two moves that I mentioned, which would be Eze up to De Bruyne, giving me a midfield including De Bruyne, Phil Foden, Bakaya Saka and Cole Palmer this week. A pretty strong looking midfield and I'm pretty happy with that. Up front, it would then be Adebayo in for Slanky. Ollie Watkins is staying now, I think, until game week 29 because he has that fixture and he has a nice run of fixtures between now and then as well. And of course, Erling Haaland, who I bought in last week. So this would be a minus four. I am just going to wait until some of the press conferences on Friday before I decide to make these transfers. But this is where my head is at at the moment. Gordon first from the bench because it doesn't sound like he is going to be available for that Forest away game. But fortunately... It does sound like he's going to be back for game week 26, which is when I really need him for. I do have to bench Gabriel away at West Ham, which I can't really decide whether it's worth just, you know, finding a route to play him, but it doesn't really make that much sense. I could play a back four or something, but at the moment I plan on benching Gabriel and then Taylor is currently yellow flagged and Ariola is my final bench. Now, in terms of captaincy, I do think it will be on a Manchester City option. Haaland is, of course, number one. I don't have any Liverpool, so I don't have a Liverpool asset. Well, I do have Trent, but I'm not going to captain him. If I owned Darwin or Jota, I would consider it, but I still think it would be on Haaland. And Kem De Bruyne, if I transfer him in, is likely to get that vice-captain armband. Of course, caveat, in case we get early team news from Manchester City, that could change these two. So just have a look at what that will mean for my teams, looking at the double in game week 25, the blank in game week 26, and then a few game weeks after as well. So Solanke to Adebayo was the first transfer I do think I'm going to end up making this week. And then Eze up to Kevin De Bruyne. Now, the other transfer, as you can see, that will leave me 0.6 million short of those transfers. So I do need to make a third transfer this week, which I think is going to be Porro down to Doughty. It could be Trippier. As much as I like Trippier, I do just think the money tied up in him is not worth it. The way that Newcastle are defending at the moment. And it means I'm playing a lot of double Newcastle defence over the next few weeks, which way the way they're performing, I don't love that either. But it does give me a pretty strong lineup this week. Gordon on the bench. We've got triple Manchester City. Things look okay. Going into game week 25, things would look pretty good. We are expecting Anthony Gordon back for that week. So I could just bench Cole Palmer away at Manchester City. I would have a doubler in Doughty, a doubler in Trent, Foden, De Bruyne, Haaland and Adebayo as my doublers. So what is that? Six doublers. With the single game week players being Trippier and Gordon at home to Bournemouth, Saka away at Burnley and Watkins away at Fulham. That feels like absolutely fine. I don't need a transfer. Roll the transfer. And then finally going into game week 26. So I would be keeping a few of them on my bench. Right now, we don't know if Charlie Taylor is going to be back or not. I'm hoping that he is, but I'm not necessarily sure it's worth a hit to sell him that week. I will have two transfers. Now, my team in theory looks okay. Cole Palmer will likely leave then. Because that Chelsea blank in 26, blank in 29 just means I don't love the amount of fixtures that he's got. Douglas Louise, who I spoke about earlier, will probably be the one to come in. He has Forrest at home that week, which is a pretty nice fixture. So that could work. And then I could play a 3-5-2 and only use one transfer. That is something I could definitely do. The other thing I quite like is getting potentially Jared Bowen in or potentially going on Kudus of West Ham. But to do that, I'd have to make a second transfer and I'd sell Trent. I'd sell Trent and go and buy probably an Aston Villa defender again in Alex Moreno is probably top billing unless we saw the likes of Pau Torres being available for this week. And the good thing about doing those two moves is I'm then not relying on having Charlie Taylor. So it's a minus four this week. It gives me six doublers in game week 25 and then it gives me a full 11 out in game week 26 without taking another hit. So Things feel okay. It just is that I don't have much Liverpool apart from Trent going into their Burnley at home this week and then their double of Brentford and Luton next week. But that is the current plan. That would be my team in 26. That would be my team in 25. 
and this would be my team in 24 for a minus four. Again, I won't be clicking confirm on these transfers despite some of the price changes. I think I'll be waiting for press conferences on Friday before I make my final decision. But this has probably been the longest team selection video I have ever done. So if you have enjoyed, you found it useful, drop a like on the video, subscribe if you are new around here, leave any questions you have as well. I'll be recording a final decisions video tomorrow on Friday where I'll discuss some of these blanks, doubles in more detail and what it might mean for your teams as well. So drop any questions you have, make sure you subscribe to get a reminder when that video does go live. Thousand likes on the video is the aim. Thank you so much for watching and I'll be back again very soon.